So let's continue on like uh, this features lecture. The next segment is key points. Now, if I show you this image and I ask you like, what are different interesting points in this image? Okay, so you will, you will say that, okay, uh, I can see maybe a road is there, there is a bridge. And I mean, I can even ask you like you're a very interesting Christian. If you are at this location and you want to meet your friend, forget about like all these mobile phones, location sharing and everything. Consider like old days when you didn't have mobile phones. And both you and your friend are like familiar with this location. Then you might, and you, you want to meet your friend. Then what, what you will say, you will say, okay, I mean, at this particular time, let's meet at some location. And that location, which you will say, that would be something, it could be like maybe corner of the bridge, or you can say maybe close to like some tree, which you both recognize. So it will be some interesting point, right? Which you can easily identify in that location or in, the, in that spot. It could be some shop there, some building. So if you think about this, how it works is that location should be like distinctive. There's, there should be no confusion. For example, if there are two bridges in this road, you will never ask your friend to, okay, let's meet on the bridge. Your, your friend will not know which bridge. Okay, so it should be distinct. And that's the whole idea about key points and interesting points. That's how like we want our algorithms to also operate. We want those algorithms to actually identify those key locations or key points and use them to perform whatever uh, downstream task you have. Okay, so that's like a high level intuition. So now let, let's describe what these interest points are. And so it, it will have some properties. For example, it, sh it should have like some kind of unique texture, right? So, and again, it's, it's kind of uh, arguable like what, uh, what interest point is. And uh, there are a lot of different variations. We'll just try to cover some of those because this has to be very concrete. What we can do is, we can define interest point as when like certain boundaries are actually changing up abruptly. Okay, so it could be this point here. And if you try to think about what's so special about this point, which is not like in this point over here, let's say. So this point is kind of a, it's boring point. I mean, nothing is changing, right? It's just a flat surface. So it doesn't matter whether you are at this pixel location, or this pixel location or this pixel location, all are same. Okay, so that's why it's boring point. But if you look at this location, this point is pretty unique. I mean, I will say there is no other point in this surface which is as unique as this. Because what's happening here is, you can see like this whole surface is actually meeting with like these two slow, slopey surfaces. And then again, you have this flat surface on the top. So this is kind of, you can say a corner or like a point of intersection of different surfaces where different segments are meeting. And I can easily call in this like a very interesting point. Okay, so th those are the points which we are looking for. And again, this is also interesting. You can see like different surfaces are actually, you can see different edges are actually intersecting. In this case, we have one more surface actually meeting at this point. So we call such points as interest points, and let's try to like make it make it uh, more more concise. Now, if you look at this image, this is a grayscale image, and there are different shapes present here. Okay, so let's try to find out like which points are actually interesting and which are boring, and the interesting points will be our key points. Now, if I pick any point like in this dark region, I mean. I think it's, in, it's, it's, it's not interesting, it's boring because there are a lot of such points. There's nothing unique about that point. But if you carefully look at the points like which are marked in these uh, red dots over here, they do have some kind of unique property. Something interesting is going on like around, around that region. Okay, for example, all these uh, red dots on the left, you can see like it's kind of corner of these squares or these blocks. Right, similarly, you have this, uh, this shape here, these points are interesting because different line segments are actually meeting there. And you can find like different structure at these points. Okay, so in a, in a crude way, we, we, we look for these kind of points and we call these interest points. And these are like some, some sample examples. Of course, 
you will not have like these simple interest points in real world images. It will be entirely different, more complicated than this. But you get the, get like the basic idea what we are looking for. Okay, where different like edges or different surfaces are meeting. Now let's look at like a real image. And again, this is a grayscale image. And if you try to draw the analogy, again, you can see we don't have any interesting point in the sky because it's kind of boring. Nothing is changing there. Same with the roof. If roof had like some kind of texture, it might have been interesting. But right now we don't have any uh, interest points here. But again, on the surface, on the ground, we don't have anything. You can see like uh, on top of the car, we have several interesting points because different lines or different segments are meeting there. Right? We, we, we can see something interesting going on. Similarly on the window and a lot of interesting points on the tree because there are a lot of like short, short edges. Okay. So interest points, the idea is again, that was like a very, very crude definition of interest points. We will, we will try to formalize that uh, in a couple of next couple of slides. But what we want is we want to detect such interest points in your input images. Okay, so we want to detect all these interest points. We don't want to miss anything. If you want to represent your image well using some set of features, uh, we should not detect like any false interest points. For example, if location is boring, we don't care about that uh, boring location. These should be uh, well, well localized, which means we should exactly know where that interest point is. Okay, and these uh, interest points should be robust against any kind of noise you might have in your input image. And this property you have seen like when you are trying to do edge detection as well. And of course it should be like efficient uh, to detect these interest points. We can't take like years or centuries or decades to detect these. Even minutes, I think it's computationally expensive. Okay, so one possible approach is corner detection. What we can do is, if we just try to detect corners in your image, they can be represented as interest points. And what we do is we try to make use of image derivatives. I think um, now you are uh, well familiar with uh, how, how to compute image derivatives and what they represent. So we'll try to make use of those. And we'll also try to extract like this uh, boundary to be able to do a uh, corner detection. Okay, so let's try to understand like some of the key properties uh, which we want when we perform these key point extraction. Now we have this object. So we have image number one on the left and we have image number two on the right. So you can clearly see these like correspond to the same object. Okay, it's just like rotated, the scale is slightly bigger. Now the first property I think which we discussed was repeatable we want these key points to be extracted extracted exactly the same way like it was done in the first round so it should not change okay and we want these points to be distinctive and so that's one key property of these key points because if you choose like these uh, dark regions here as key points then it's kind of not distinctive there are a lot of these dark regions and you cannot really tell okay which one is which so here i'm showing you some key points which are present in this uh, image on the left and the corresponding key points on the right, okay? So if your algorithm can actually detect these key points in this image, and it's like able to repeat the same thing on a different set of, uh, a different image, which is again of the same object, and it can identify the same set of key points, then you can use those key points to actually perform image matching. Right? Because those key points, if they are matching, then you say, okay, it's the same image, even though the image is rotated. Right? So let's try to understand how we can actually use these key points for uh, key point matching. First step, it's fine. You detect these key points. So don't worry about how these were detected. We'll cover some algorithms for that. For not just assume that, okay, we have an algorithm which can do this. So we detect key points in the first image. We detect key points in the second image. And these crosses are actually showing you those. Then the second point is you will define some kind of region around this key point. In this case, this is uh, the window shown by the yellow bo uh, bonding box. And you will do the same over here. And you can see that the bonding box on this image is actually slightly smaller than bonding box on the right. Okay. 
So then the idea is when you are detecting these key points, you should be all also able to tell the scale of that key point, how big that key point is, so that your algorithm, algorithm is actually scale invariant. Okay, if you enlarge your image or you have a bigger object, which is the same object, then you should be able to match these key points. Okay, so then what you do is you extract features from this patch. So let's say you, if you, if you just focus on this, it will look something like this, right? And if you extract from this location, it will look something like this because it's slightly bigger, the scale was different. And the third thing which you will need is some kind of a rotation variable, which will tell you, okay, what is the orientation of this object? And you will use that, that orientation to fix the align, alignment of this patch. Okay, so you rotate that. And now you can see that, okay, these patches look exactly the same, which means that these two different key points are actually same part or same key point in your input image. Okay. And the final step is you extract some kind of features from this patch, extract some kind of features from this patch, and you try to match those. So this is kind of, you can say like region-based features because you're not using the whole image. You're only using uh, this small region over here. And if they match, then you say that, okay, key points coming from the same image. And similarly, you can do for all the other key points. And if all the key points match, you can say that, okay, these two images belong to the same object. Okay, so that's how like one simple, interesting application, how you can, if you have an algorithm which can detect these key points, how you can utilize those key points for image matching. Also on, on a large scale, I mean, it doesn't work this way, but if you think about this, these days you have image search, right? So this algorithm can even be used for that image search, whether it's like Google image search or Bing image search. You will give like your input image, which could be this image. And then that algorithm on the back end will detect these key points on your provided image. And it will do the same for all the images like which we have in like Bing server or Google server, which will give these kind of key points. And you will follow these exact same set of steps. And then what will happen is the images which are actually very close to each other, based on these features, your Google search engine or Bing search engine will retrieve those images or show you those images. Okay. Now let's go through like one of the uh, corner detection algorithm. And the, the idea here is we will uh, we'll try to find these corners where different edges are actually meeting. And this is from this uh, very famous paper. Okay, so it's called like Harris corner detector. And let's go over like the basic idea uh, of this uh, algorithm. So in this algorithm, what we want to do is we want to first of all, not look at the global, global picture, we'll look at small windows or small regions. And we try to find out whether in this small vicinity or this in smaller region, whether corners are present or not. And as we discussed earlier, like corners could be interesting points. And of course, not the only interesting point. There could be a lot of other different ways to define interesting points, but this is one of the variation. Right? So what it tries to do is it tries to find out these corners in small windows. And what this algorithm does, you operate on these small patches and you try to shift this patch in the image okay, in, in various different directions. And the idea is if you change the location of this patch and the intensity is actually not changing, then it's not a corner. Okay. And if the intensity is changing, intensity changing means like you, you're trying to match actually that patch with the image patch. If the intensity, intensity doesn't change, it's, it's not an interesting point or it's not a corner, but if the intensity will change, it means there will be a corner. Okay, so let's go through these simple examples to understand this uh, better. Okay, so this is your location. Now, what you can do is you can just count the intensity of all the pixels which are inside this box, right? All of these are black pixels. So it will be 255 if you compute the average value, or you can say like zero, if zero is black. Yeah, yeah, if zero is black, okay? so. The average intensity at this location is zero. Now, if you slightly move this towards left, towards right, or top or bottom in any direction, that intensity will still remains zero because the pixel value is not changing. 
which means that your surface is kind of flat and there's no change in any direction and it's not a corner. The other way could be, let's consider like this patch on, 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 on this location. Okay. If you move your, your filter uh, in top down direction, again, you can see that there will be no change, right? Because the number of white pixels will not change if you move, move this towards the top or if you move the, this towards the bottom. And similarly, the black pixels are not going to change. So the average intensity will still remain the same. Although it's an edge, but it's not a corner. Okay. Now, if you put this patch on this corner right over here, then it doesn't matter like in which direction you move your patch. You will always observe a change in intensity. Right. For example, if you go towards like this direction, which is left top, then you can see that number of white pixels will increase and number of black pixels will reduce, which means your intensity, average intensity is going to increase. And if you, let's say, go towards a right bottom in this direction, then again, your black pixels are going to increase, white pixels are going to reduce inside that region. So your intensity again will change, it will drop. So it doesn't matter which direction you go, your intensity is always changing. So this is a very, very clean technique, right? very simple algorithm. And you can identify like any corners you have present in your input image. Okay, so let's see like how exactly this is done. Of course, that was like a high level idea. We need like a much more complex algorithm uh, for that. And I will have to select this. This is like the most complex algorithm we are going to study in this course. And of course, we are not going to go into detail because this algorithm itself will take, I think, a couple of lectures if we, if we try to do that. Okay, but I will tell you like which part you should focus on, which part you can ignore. I think that will be useful uh, for you to go through this. So the basic step, which, what we can do is we can just perform template matching. And template matching, you have, you, have, you have seen a lot in this course. Okay, so the idea is you create template of these corners, something like this. Okay, so this is a template of a corner where you will see like a corner like this. And if you put this patch or this kernel on your input image, then if you will have a kernel like this, it will be able to identify that because that's the pattern we are looking for. Okay. Similarly, this particular pattern uh, template here, it will look for corners which are in this direction. Right. Similarly, you can create like other templates, like you can just keep rotating on uh, these values. And whenever you will have a uh, a matching corner, these templates will be able to match it. Okay, but this is like a very crude algorithm. And of course, we we, we don't uh, use this because this is like a lot of limitations as well. It is only considering like some discrete values, right? Of course, you can make it like slightly bigger and uh, make it more smooth, but still it will be discrete. Okay, so that's fine. So the other thing is like the summation of this filter should be zero, which I think you, you know by now. It's kind of trying to normalize. And if you have different intensities in your input image, then you don't want them to be like different. You want the response always to be the same number to be able to identify whether there's a corner or not. All right, so that was like a very, very uh, simple algorithm. Let's uh, go through like the actual algorithm, the Harris uh, corner, uh, corner detection algorithm. And before that, let, let's do a quick revisit of correlation. And just to uh, refresh that, and you know this equation. To compute correlation, you have a function, you have a kernel, and you perform element-wise multiplication of these two. Okay, and that's going to give you just one number. And if the input passion matches matches with the kernel, you will get a very high value. If it doesn't match, you will get a very low value. Okay, so now what we do is we try to find these corners, or you can say like interest points in your image using autocorrelation. So now let's try to understand what autocorrelation is. So you have seen correlation where you have like a input patch from your, from your image, and then you have a kernel. So you're trying to find correlation between those two different, uh, you can say like kernels or, or filters, right? Autocorrelation is you have your image and you extract the kernel from the image itself and then find correlation. So you are actually finding correlation within image. You don't need external filter. 
Okay. So then what will happen is if you are like at a given location in your image and you fix, if you extract like that patch. So if you apply the, uh, if you apply that kernel at, at the same location, it will perfectly match because you extracted it from that location, right? But if you move around that kernel in the vicinity, so that's the key. So you know, not just like apply on the same uh, location, you apply in the neighborhood. And that's how you compute this autocorrelation. Okay, so what you do is you extract this window from a, any location X, Y, and you shift that by these values, U and V, which defines the neighborhood, like how far you want to go in the neighborhood. And then, you just find the difference between these. Okay, so I X Y is the exact location where you're interested in. And this I X plus U, Y plus V, v it represents like the neighborhood. So what you're doing is you're just finding the difference, whether the pixel intensity is actually changing in the neighborhood or not. Okay, and then you just square that value. And this is just a weighting function, uh, which can be like, you can just ignore it, you can actually use a Gaussian weight here. And again, it's, it has the same idea. Like if you want to pay more attention to the center location and less attention to the, uh, the other locations which are far from the center. So this is like just to weight that. And you can even ignore this, so don't worry about it. Just focus on this. Okay, so now if you think about this, if at a given location in your image, if it's a flat surface and the intensity is actually not changing, what will happen? It doesn't matter like where you go in the neighborhood, the pixel intensity is not going to change. So if you compute the subtraction, it will always give you zero. Okay, which means if you are at a flat surface in your input image and you compute this autocorrelation using this equation, you are going to get zero. Okay, which means the point is not interesting. Now, what will happen if the intensity is actually changing a lot in that neighborhood? then this value is going to get bigger. Okay, so which means that your autocorrelation value will be higher and which will help you in determining like those interest, interesting points. Okay, so that's like a high level uh, intuition. And I think now I'm going to show you like some detailed maths and uh, you don't have to worry about it. It's, it's doing exactly the same thing, the intuition which I explained to you, but like in a more formal way. And it's, it's trying to actually optimize this process. Okay, so this is intensity, as, as I told you, like uh, the current location where you're interested in. This is shifted in intensity, like in the neighborhood. You are taking steps U and V. And this is just a window function. Okay. And again, this window function could be like, as I said, just like a step function zero one, where you are paying equal attention to all the neighborhood values. It could be a Gaussian, it could be any other, any other function. So this is not, not really important here. All right, so what will happen if you look at this image patch, again, these are pixel values. So for each location, you will compute this autocorrelation. So if this is the neighborhood, this uh, red bonding box, and then this is the center pixel location where we are interested in. What we will do is we'll compute like the intensity difference with all the other pixel values inside this region using this formula. And that, that's going to give you this value. Okay, so this is like a, you can say a response function using this autocorrelation of this input image. Okay. Now we can use use that kind of autocorrelation to actually find corner detection. So let's focus on this uh, real world image and we'll look into three different uh, cases. Okay. So we have three different points. One point is uh, at this location, uh, which is kind of like the, the edge of the roof. Okay, the second is over the clouds. And the third is, I think, over somewhere in the, on the ground, over these leaves. I, I'm, I'm not able to actually locate that. Yeah, over here, right over here, okay? And then we compute like this autocorrelation, the equation I showed you earlier, and these are the responses for these three different locations. Okay, so what's happening here and again, these plots are just like surface plots for the same response. 
Okay, it's just like instead of 2D plot, you're creating a 3D plot of that. So this kind of response you will uh, you will get from maybe the uh, maybe the clouds, right? Because it's perfectly smooth and it's not changing a lot. And this kind of response you will get from the edge, which is uh, on top of the roof. Okay, and this kind of response you will get like something from from the ground, and you can see that like you have like this kind of peak over here. And this peak is something which we are interested in. So this peak will define like whether you have interest point or not. So in a way you can see that we have interest point here because this is kind of a ridge, a peak here, right? And this is interest point, but this is not so interesting. The values are not changing a lot. Okay, so that's how you can use this autocorrelation to find uh, corners in your input image. Now, if you think about this, what exactly you're trying to do is you're trying to compute the difference between the pixel intensity with, with the neighborhood, right? All the pixels like in, in the neighborhood. Now, if you think about like the, the amount of computation you require for each location, you will have uh, that many computation steps. Okay, and if let's say the image resolution is 600 cross 600, the total number of computations you'll have to do to get that response for an input image, it will be almost 5.2 billion operations, which is a lot. Okay, so it will be computationally expensive. And that's why we have like optimized algorithms to, to, to do that. And I will just briefly give you the intuition like uh, how we can optimize this without going into uh, more detail. And you don't have to worry about like if you don't understand any, any part of that. Okay, so before that, if you think about what exactly we were looking for, we were looking for like a strong peak, something like this. Okay, so this peak represents if a current pixel location is actually distinct from the neighborhood. And that's how we define interest points. So if you look at this, uh, the surface, it actually looks like something like this, right? You can kind of approximate this with this, uh, bell curve here or bell surface here. Okay, so that's a quadratic surface. And now what we do is we, we try to approximate uh, that using a, a different function. And before coming to that, we'll need, I think, Taylor series for that. And again, don't, don't worry if you, if you don't recall Taylor series or anything, uh, you don't have to really understand what, what's going on. But if you do, I think that's really good. And I will be happy to like discuss if you're uh, more interested in this during the office hours, but I will quickly run through this. Okay, so Taylor series, you know, you can approximate any function using this series. And in the series, you have like different set of derivatives. Okay, so if you compute derivative at any given point, then you can compute like multiple derivatives and use them like to represent this function. For example, the series over here, we are computing derivatives at point A. And that function, the original function f can be represented by this series over here. Okay, so you have the original function value at a. This is the first order derivative, second order derivative, third order derivative, right? And usually like the higher order derivatives actually will give you very small values. So if you have to approximate, you can actually just get rid of these higher order derivatives and maybe just use first two or three terms. Now, if you look at this uh, simple animation, the actual function you had was exponent of x, okay, the, bl the blue curve. And the red curve is actually showing you, it's trying to approximate this function using Taylor series. And if you look at these values of n, this is like how many terms we are using. Okay, if you just use the first term, you can see it's just like a horizontal line, okay, because it's just f a, right? It, it's just one value. And if you take two terms, then we'll have to compute this first order derivative. And then you have the slope as well. So that's why the horizontal line. And as you keep in including like these higher order terms, you can see that nearly, I think, n equals to five or six, you're kind of very close to this function. Okay, just like very uh, simple example here. Now, why, why that, is, that is important? Because now what we want to do is, we want to, we don't want to compute like this point wise difference. We want to approximate this, okay? So how we do that, uh, 
we actually compute the second moment matrix and this is using image uh, derivatives so basically this equation over here this can be approximated by the simple matrix multiplication and again as i said we we don't have to worry about like how we get that approximation it's like a long uh, theoretical proof but this is a way to approximate uh, that equation and in this one this moment matrix here why derivatives are important why we're talking about derivatives because this moment matrix is actually composed of derivatives of your input image okay so this is exactly your uh, m matrix and these symbols are like this is your first order derivative a partial derivative in x direction again you multiply x and y this is the same term and this is partial derivative in y term all right so now now the idea is once you have this uh, moment matrix you can actually compute this response and this is this response is like all we we care about so what we do given an image we just compute these partial derivatives and we'll try to combine them to get that m matrix which will give you the final response and there are a lot of heuristics involved so it's not that it was invented in a day week or month or year i think it's like research of several decades so i don't like expect you to understand this like just in one lecture and that's why i said don't worry about but just try to understand like the the overall steps which are being uh performed like uh, uh in, in this algorithm okay so let's say this is your input image we compute like partial derivatives this is an x direction and you know that uh, how to compute this what this means this is basically just like edges in x direction right similarly you can compute edges in y direction this is the uh, x y component and you can just multiply these two that will give you the second part here uh, that that part is also similar okay and you can also like just multiply ix with itself that will give you the first term over here and if you multiply i y with itself it will give you the fourth term so using image derivatives you can get the elements of this matrix okay so this is like the uh, corner algorithm as i said it's 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 i think the most complex algorithm uh, in the whole course so the first step is you compute m matrix okay m matrix you know like what are the components you know how like all these steps are uh, being computed and once you have that then you try to compute corner cornerness score for each pixel location okay then a lot of heuristics involved first of all like how to compute corner cornerness again we have some heuristics for that and it's not just heuristics like th there's a lot of theoretical backing to it again which we will not be able to cover and then we, we, we put like some kind of threshold on this cornerness score to determine whether that point is corner or not okay so once we have done that we will perform non-maximum suppression you have done that earlier for edges as well so it's exactly the same algorithm and the idea is like if you are saying this particular location is a corner, then you should make sure that there are no other corners in the vicinity, right? You should have like some very unique corner. And that's the whole idea about using non-maximum suppression here. And the idea of threshold is just when you don't want to take too many corners. So that's why you need to set some kind of threshold. And the intuition is the same, like which you used for edge detection. You have some set of threshold there, right? To determine like whether this is an edge or not. Okay, so let's quickly go through uh, the uh, each of those steps and this is your input image you can compute like these uh, partial derivatives ix iy and you can you can perform blurring as well you know that if you perform some kind of blurring or smoothing using gaussian filter that improves your edge detection so that's optional but you can do it you can compute like the components for m this is just ix, IX square iy square so this is you're just multiplying the element wise these uh, these values of the matrices okay and then you have like a gaussian filtering on on top of this this is one additional step and then you have a equation for cornerness and again don't ask me like how how you get this again there's a long theoretical proof for this and this also involves like eigenvectors eigenvalues which we briefly covered in the second lecture right but uh, i think we really don't have time to uh, talk about all, all, all that but you have a function which actually tells you which of these points are actually corner and which are not which will give you some kind of score which which looks like this and the equation is exa exactly like this you compute the determinant of this m matrix the image moment 
and you compute the trace and you have some again one alpha parameter here okay then as i said you use a threshold to pick like which is corner and then you perform non max suppression to identify which are the uh, peak values or which are the corners okay so again this is one of the first uh, corner detection algorithm or you can say key point detection algorithm so i just wanted to talk about this because this is like gives you an idea like how it all started and how complex it was and let's look at like some of the results okay so these are the uh, input images you can see the lighting conditions are different it's slightly uh, rotated as well this is computing the cornerness response so after you compute the m matrix you have that equation where you computed the determinant of m then the trace of m and using the uh, parameter alpha you get this response now you you see that you are detecting a lot of lot of corners right this is not really useful and therefore you need a threshold okay so you set a threshold and you say that okay only some of these are corners and then you can see that okay this really needs some kind of no, non maximum suppression because in this vicinity you can't have like all these key points and you run that algorithm where you suppress like the neighborhood only pick like which has the highest intensity that will give you these key points and you can see that the images were of the same object right and the lighting condition was different the right image was slightly tilted slightly rotated but if you carefully look at like uh, the key points which have been detected i mean they kind of match okay and that's why like these key points are very powerful these key points like plotted on the image itself you can see i mean you don't have any key point on the flat surfaces right only at these interesting points which is pretty cool you can see like this interesting shape here you have a lot of key points on this boundary so in a way if you think about this this is kind of trying to find the boundaries okay so that's one use case you can see like it's on the boundaries right and again not like very flat boundaries you can see like if for example these feet over here right it's you, do, you don't have any key points here so if it's kind of curvature or if like you have different edges meeting together those kind of points you can see on the horns here right so those key points are actually detected okay i i know like that's a lot of uh maths there and i as i said earlier i don't expect you to understand all of that but at least if you can understand like these steps how this algorithm is actually extracting key points i expect you to understand that how you compute gradients you know that how you're getting these matrices this is like just you use those equations right and i don't want you to understand like how we derive this equation as i said it was decades of research uh, which will be very difficult to cover like in just one lecture even in, the, in this course mm -hmm.